Well, hey, Becoming Me, I am so excited to introduce you to, as I love to call you, my warrior brother, Joey Vaughn. Joey Vaughn, welcome to Becoming Me. What's up? Hey, what an honor and a privilege to be here. It is always great and fun to chat with you. It's so much fun to chat with you. And y'all, I have the privilege of knowing Joey Vaughn in real life, as I like to say. So many of our Becoming stories, we've only really met online. And I know this dude up close and personal. His family is incredible. And I cannot wait for y'all to hear his story today. So before we kind of keep going, Joey Vaughn, if someone didn't know you, who is Joey Vaughn? Joey Vaughn is, first of all, the highest privilege to be a child of God. Um, I'm originally from Panama, Central America, migrated to the United States in 92. I am married to the most amazing, incredible woman in the universe, in the planet, my wife, Lucianne from yes. Puerto Rico, and um, have three incredible children, Josiah, Julian, and Jovan Alexander. Uh, I am a worship artist and resident pastor at our local church, Middlebrook Church. I am a traveling, touring artist. Um, I am a writer, I am an actor, and I love to cook. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that about you. What do you like to cook? Oh, man, it depends on the week. Um, you know, this past few weeks has been salads, just oh. different types of salads. But I can do Latin, I can do Asian, Japanese, Italian. I absolutely love to cook. Oh, that's amazing. I love it. But you know, I, I want to dive straight into your story because I've had the privilege of hearing your story. Like what God is doing in and through you is absolutely amazing. And so I would love for you to just take some time and unpack your journey. Like what has made you who you are today? Well, I think my, my journey began when I was five years old. Um, my parents did not, living in Panama, my parents really did not have a relationship with God. Um, there was a huge attack over my life. First of all, I used to get out very high fevers and my, my grandfather would take me every week uh, to witch doctors trying to resolve and heal um, the fevers that I would get all the time. And when my parents um, accepted the Lord, went to, to a real church, um, there was an encounter with God and it, it made them take their kids to church and our lifestyle began to change, but the enemy was not was not happy. When my parents accepted Christ, um, there was such an attack over my life that um, I my, my mom shares a story that I that I fall, I trip, I split my tongue in half. They rushed me to the hospital, and um, at the age of eight, I find myself being a stutterer. When I woke up from surgery, I couldn't speak normal. I couldn't I couldn't do the things that I wanted to do as a child. And it put so much pressure on me. Um, I had to deal with bullying from everywhere in school, even with my own siblings, because what I was I used to do speaking, one of the biggest things we can do, I no longer was able to do normally. So it affected my self-esteem. It affected my joy, my happiness, my childhood. And at the age of eight, I can say that I had a personal encounter with God, my favorite um, uh, my, my, my favorite Bible character was Moses because he was a stutterer. And I would find myself always locking myself in a room, talking to God, even at, at the age of eight, at the age of nine. I was baptized when I was 10. But I knew when I spoke to him in my bedroom, no one was around. I knew he was listening to me. Mm. And this became my, my vocal therapy. So I'm dealing with being a stutterer and dealing with such a low self-esteem. Imagine not being able to raise your hand in class and you listen to me right now and it doesn't really match the story because you, you hear me speaking normally, but it was one of the darkest days of my life. And I remember when I was eight, when I was nine, when I was 10, going to birthday parties and I just, I, I couldn't do what the other kids were able to do. And in those secret meetings with, with God, I told him and I asked him to use me I did not know how he was going to do it, but I asked him that if you use if you use Moses, you can use me in the same way. And God began to use me in singing. I began to sing when I was young, and I got finally I was I was free from from oppressions, and I was able to sing at children's church. And God began to mold me and began to heal me. Um, I can't. I know God healed me from stuttering, 
but once in a while when I'm when I'm stressed or when I'm tired, it comes back out. And I think God literally whispers, says, I just want to remind you where I took you out of so you never forget. Wow. So that is part of my story. Then then I jumped to 1992. We have political issues in our in our nation, Panama. And God calls my parents to uh, migrate from Panama to the United States. And that was another another difficult part of our journey, um, learning how to live in the United States uh, for the first time, leaving your family, leaving your church, your friends behind and um, not being able to return because there was no papers, nothing like that. And in 92, we began our journey here in Bellevue, Florida. And that was the other part of the story, being an immigrant now and dealing with, with uh, persecution and um, dealing with racism. Um, it was, so you know, you got a stutterer immigrant now. So oh it was, uh, it was a difficult times, but then throughout that later on, as you know, I was able to sing in church and became a pastor and, um, I'm cutting it short and then, um, signing my first, uh, music deal in Canada and then being able to be part of a group uh, and then do movies and then awards and all of that stuff. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I just want to pause this here right now because the adversity that you have journeyed through, you know, and where you're sitting now and you're living your dream. I mean, you as an eight-year-old prayed, like God use me, he's using you and he's using you on a global platform to really partner with people around the world to discover hope in him. But in the midst of those moments where it just felt like you were being persecuted, bullied, um, made fun of, how did you journey through that? Because I know like that's not easy. Um, and there's other people watching who they feel, you know, they look different. They sound different. They don't maybe fit into whatever different type of stereotype. And um, they might feel that same persecution you do. So how did you journey through that? You know, it's funny. My story, I feel, is not for everyone. It's for specific people that I dealt with what, uh, what I dealt with. You know, I can remember last year when we were ending the tour last year, I went to Publix right here in Ocala. Mm -hmm. And I remember that I was walking to, uh, to pay my food and there was a young man. And when I listened to him, it, I connected right away because he was a stutterer. And I can see the frustration in him trying to release those words. Mm -hmm. And I had to tell him, hey, relax, breathe. I, mm -hmm. I know what you're going through. And I told him, and my story will never change. This is the same story. This weekend in, in Hampton, Regina, there was over 10,000 people. I'm sharing the same story to mm -hmm. 10,000 people to, to this young man. And I told him and I said, hey, relax, breathe. Because I had to go through therapy, mm -hmm. you know. And finally, when he was able to release the words, I looked at him and I said, can I tell you something? And I told him, God has a real big plan for your life. Right now, you may think that stuttering is hard and, and life might be difficult. But I looked at him and I said, I want you to remember these words. God has a huge plan for your life. And, um, and this is my story. You know, I, I'm grateful for the relationship that I have with God, mm -hmm. the relationship that my parents um, taught me. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm grateful for my parents that will always tell me, Jovan, you're going to be someone. Mm -hmm. Jovan, you're going to sing. And I remember when I was eight, when I was nine, that we would be driving hours in the car and my parents would tell me, Joy Mom, you're going to be on stage one day. You're going to sing in front of people one day. I'm a kid. I don't know what they're talking about, but I remember those words. Mm. How powerful is that, too, when you have one set of voices who are trying to belittle you to tear you down from being who God made you to be? You have another set of voices who are breathing life into you. And that power of who you chose to listen to at the end of the day was the voices who were calling you up to be the Joey Vaughn that God made you to be. Um, yeah, go ahead. I, I will never forget Ms. Rodriguez. She, she passed away uh, in third grade. She was my third grade teacher. And I will never forget, she would call the, the kids in, in the classroom to answer questions. And I would not raise my hand. I would not raise my hand for nothing because I was afraid. I didn't want people to make in front of me from the simple answer, you mm -hmm. know. And I remember my mom went to school and she met with Ms. Rodriguez in front of the whole class. And she says, I don't care 
what he sounds like. He went, when you ask a question, you better raise your hand. She pointed at me. She, she gave me that fear. You better raise your hand. And, and then she told me it's Rodriguez. And you better uh, um, signal him in front of the class because he has to be just like everybody else. I will never forget that. Miss Rodriguez, may she rest in peace. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love it. The, they are calling you up. They weren't going to let you hide from who God made you to be. I, oh. I love that. Hey, are you a coffee drinker? I don't know this about you either. I am not a coffee drinker. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is probably why I didn't know this. I had to block it from my memory or something. Like, what? Okay, so what's your, like, you like tea or, like, energy drinks? Or you're just, like, naturally always energized? You know, I, I am always energized. I believe that. <laughs> but I do like tea. I'm a water guy. You know, okay. singing three, four times a week. Um, I got to be on water. I gotcha. So if you were having a cup of water with someone else on their own becoming journey, all right? And you're trying to encourage them to be who God made them to be. What would you say? I will tell them, be aware when God calls you, when God gives you a vision, there will be people who are going to destroy that vision. There are going to be people who are not going to believe in you. They're not going to support you. There's also going to be people that only want something from you. Um, but you have to be aware because if we are able to listen to them and follow everything they're saying, it's going to be very difficult for us to become who God has called us to be. Mm. Because sometimes we surround ourselves with the wrong people, even people with a platform. And, and at times we get so caught up. And I, I went through seasons of my life where I completely lost track of who I was. Hmm. I completely lost track of my voice, of my calling. And I, it was like a godly slap. And I had to realize, man, I've made it here for a reason, for a purpose. Those people were not there when I was stuttering. They were not there when I was in, in Ms. Rodriguez's class, you know, hmm. and I had to wake up. So I want to tell someone today, be aware of people who are hmm. not, who don't understand your vision. Surround yourself. You got. If it wasn't for my circle, man, I don't know where I would be today. But I'm so grateful for my circle that reminds me of what God has called me to be. But also, they keep me in line. If I start turning into a diva or a celebrity, you know, they call me out. They call yeah. me out. I love that. No, that's amazing. You know, Joey Vaughn, if somebody was watching your story and they wanted to connect with you online, they want to listen to your music, they want to watch the movies that you're in, how can people connect with you online? Man, absolutely. I am on social media. See, people are going to crucify me for this, but they don't understand. <laughs> I'm on social media 24-7. I am praying with people, mm -hmm. helping people. Uh, so you can go to my Instagram, uh, Joey Vaughn, at J-O-I-V-A-N. J-I-M-E-N-E-C. You can just Google my name. You can find all the social medias. But you know what? Social media for me is different. Um, I got off stage. I literally, I got off stage on Sunday. I was tired. And one of the security guards came up to me and he says, Trayvon, there's somebody in the back waiting for you. And I'm going, Hampton, Virginia, who's waiting for me? And when I went backstage, <clears throat> there was a young man and he was waiting. I can tell he was afraid. I don't know how he got the security. <laughs> And uh, I met with him and he says, hey, I just want to let you know that I, I write music and can you tell me what to do, you know, if, if I want to do what you're doing? And you know what, at that moment, I knew it was a godly moment. And I took my time with this young man, you know, if it was five minutes and I shared with him a little bit of my journey, what to do and what not to do. So social media, you can find me social media, mm -hmm. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and then no one is TikTok. I mean, TikTok. Yes. <laughs> yes, I love following you on TikTok too. So much fun. And what I love about what you said though is, I mean, truly you put the social back in the social media. A lot of people are just like posting, but for you, you're interacting, you're engaging. Um, and I just, I even love how you and your wife at times will do lives for, you know, relationship help. And I mean, I ask you guys for help all the time and prayer. So keep it coming, Joey Vaughn. I love it. Hey, we'll have all the links in the show notes as well, guys. 
guys. So you can easily connect with Joey Vaughn. Um, but thank you. Thanks for sharing your story, your journey. Thanks for being one of those circle people for me. I know over the years, just your texts, um, your prayers, and I know you're praying for me, your encouragement and just cheering me on with becoming me TV. It's just such a privilege, such a joy. Um, you make a profound influence impact on me. So thank you. I tell you this, um, our pastor, Pastor Tim, has been really stronger lately on our staff uh, in prayer. And I've been praying since I was born. My, if you have the mom that I had, man, you better pray or you were just going straight to heaven. Um, and we, we, my wife and I, we believe in our prayer list. It's on my phone. It's on her phone. It's on my computer. It's on my refrigerator, even in my car. We, are, we have a list of names and we believe, we believe in the power of prayer. And you know it, girl, praying for you, praying for your family. Um, I'm, I'm believing for great things. I can't wait to, you know, I don't want to get into details, but you know, I can't wait to just one day take photos, selfies and cry with you and celebrate with you and, and tell that we've been waiting for you. Never mind. Keep going. All right. Now people are going to want to know this inside joke and I love it. It's not even a, it's not a joke. Actually, this is, I will let becoming me that TV in on, um, I have asked Joey Vaughn and his wife to pray with and for me for years now. Like it's been years, um, for whoever I marry my future husband and they will text me. And like, literally what he just said, we were at an event a couple weeks ago and he, all he had to say was he looked at me and goes, Hey, I can't wait for that day. And I was like, I know what you're talking about. You know, that day I'm walking down the aisle and you're snapping pictures. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yes. So this is the kind of people that Joey Vaughn's talking about, like having in your corner and people that you might not be around each other every day, see each other every day, but I know that you're in my circle and that you are praying with and for me. And that's a big deal. So thank yeah. you. Absolutely. It's an honor. Uh, it's a pleasure. And man, I'm happy to be in your circle. It's an honor. Well, thank you, Joey Vaughn. Hey, we'll have the links, everybody in the show notes. Please go follow and connect with him. And you're amazing. Thank you.